Okay, so we have uh, we have written our uh, strategy optimizer. We have written all the functions needed to run this um, genetic algorithm. Now we need to um, to to actually run it and see how it works. So for this, inside of our examples folder, I've created a try strategy optimizer. And here is where, I, where I write, I'll write the rest of the code. Now, a little bit of template code, so to speak, not really template, but uh, this code allows us to run this particular um, file from, uh, from the PyJuke main folder. Um, so we don't need to CD into the examples folder and run it from there. We can just run it from PyJuke. Now I'm going to copy paste this uh, initial code right here. Actually, I'm just going to... Nah, I'll copy paste and I'll explain. So, first we import a few things. We import the exchange, we import the data frame, and we import our strategy. We import our strategy, uh, which is the one that I talked to you about before, uh, Bollinger Bands RSI. So we want to optimize the parameters for this strategy. Next, we're going to import the backtester function. Now, remember what I talked about when I talked about the fitness function. So in our case, the fitness function is def uh, is decided is defined by what results this backtest their uh, returns so our we know that an individual solution is a good solution if the backtester return uh, good profits so we're gonna um, we're gonna use the backtester as a fitness function well a, a sort of a modified version of the backtester we're gonna use it as a fitness function and this backtester this modified version is gonna return for each individual is gonna return the uh, profit ratio that that individual created using this strategy for the given period that we're backtesting for and uh, and uh, we want that to be max basically right okay next plot data because we're gonna plot something i believe <clears throat> uh, and utils dot dict so dot dict is something that allows me when i have a dictionary um the name is equal to hello hello d is equal to d i can't do this i i can't do d dot name i can do d of name but i can't do this one so dot dict allows me to do that dot dict, dot dict is a is a helper class that i've written here um, I haven't written, I've taken it from Stack Overflow, obviously. Um, uh, well, not obviously, maybe I could have figured it out. But yeah, anyway, anyway, the point is, this is what uh, dot dict looks like, and this is what it does. It allows me to call objects in a dictionary, it's actually a dot dict right now, um, uh, like this, which is, uh, which is good, it's useful. I like, I like this kind of syntax. All right. Next, um, we're we're importing the strategy optimizer, obviously, uh, a pretty print and decimal. Um, now our backtester takes in and take, takes in three three main things: an entry strategy, where we define what strategy we're using and the arguments that we're calling it with. Takes uh, the entry settings. Right now, it's uh, these are empty, but um, entry settings can be. Um, are we gonna have subsequent entries as well? If the price goes against us in um, when we, when we in in strategy when we get a buy signal and the price goes against us, are we gonna buy some more um, so that we sort of uh, um, pay less overall or not? And also, when we get a signal, are we buying exactly on that signal or are we buying a little bit below? below it, are placing a limit order a little bit below. This is what entry settings does um, 
what this dict does for the backtester function. And, uh, and the exit settings uh, specifies the profit target. This means 2.5%. Uh, and the stop loss, this means 90% uh, below um, the buy price. And in our, uh, when we're going to run this strategy optimizer, we're actually going to optimize for these guys as well as for this guy. Um, yeah, so it's going to be interesting. We can also optimize for stop loss, but uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, we, we might do that. We might optimize for all this. This code right here uh, initializes our exchange, our Binance, um, and gets uh, gets uh, gets the market data for Litecoin USDT for this pair. The last 1,000 candlestick uh, of on the one-hour interval. So it gets the last 1,000 uh, hours of of market data for for um, this symbol. And as the uh, symbol data, Binance. Uh, holds an object for every pair that they trade and in that ob object we, 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 I call this object symbol data and in that object they, they uh, specify things like uh, what's the minimum amount of, of that a pair that you can uh, trade um, and what are uh, the steps that you can trade let's say the minimum amount of bitcoin that you can trade is 0 0.01 and and you trade it in steps of 0, 0, 0, 0.005 so you can trade 0, 0, 0.01 0, 0, uh, 0.015 0, 0, 0.002 but you can't trade 0, 0, 0.013 for example um, and things like that for all these pairs so for all the pairs all the symbols on the exchange so we're gonna need this now Um, now we need to define the optim uh, the fitness function. And the fitness function um, computes the fitness of, uh, of one individual. So how does it look like? So we want to um, have we want to have five things. We have five things that we want to optimize. We want to optimize the four parameters of the uh, of the strategy: um, RSI length, Bollinger Bands length, RSI overbought and oversold levels, and one last thing: we want to optimize uh, the profit target, right? That number that right now is uh, is uh, two uh, two point five percent. So we want to optimize this these things. So. That means that an individual will be uh, will will have five genes, yeah, five genes. So the first um, uh, the first four genes are gonna be RSI length, Bollinger Band length, uh, over over button over so level, and the last uh, gene uh, of the individual is going to be the profit target. And um, these genes. Uh, our, each of them is going to be an integer and so we need to transform from an integer to uh, this uh, decimal to, to this uh, floating float value right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the the rain the profit target in our um, optimization algorithm be a number between 1000 and uh, 1010 1000 being zero percent and 1010 being ten percent and that number, um, that's that the that's the range that we're gonna use in the algorithm, and in the fitness function, we're gonna transform that number between a thousand and a thousand and ten into um, uh, into this float 
looking like this 1.0 whatever it's gonna be and actually I'm not gonna start at 1000 I'm gonna start at 1005 because uh, uh, 0 0.5 percent is sort of like the minimum amount of profit that we want to make on this on this uh, strategy per trade uh, let's let's just assume that um, that we want to make at least 0 0.5 percent per trend maybe that's a bit uh, that's a bit much uh, maybe that's a that's not uh, not a lot considering that we're on a one hour time frame but we're just going to use that for now so profit target is the 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 fifth gene of the individual remember indexing starts at zero <clears throat> we take this and we divide it by 1000 The other four genes in the, in the individual are going to go into the uh, entry strategy arcs. Remember, these are the arcs. Um, these are the initial arcs. And um, these are the ones that we call the strategy with um, when we initialize it, when we create it. So the first uh, four elements are going to be the arguments, and the last one is going to be the profit target. So we're assigning this value to, to this value right here. And now we're going to uh, cal calculate it. So if we go to our backtesting function, it takes a data frame uh, containing the candlestick data, the symbol data of the symbol that we're um, back testing on the exchange and then it takes entry strategy exit settings and uh, uh, sorry entry strategy entry settings and exit settings it, it takes this three um, three uh, dictionaries dot dot dict and it returns information about the back testing results now if I go and have a look at this back tester so it takes data frame symbol data exchange and this three Dic dictionaries this 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 here are some models of how these dictionaries would look like now th this is where all the calculation is happening I'm not gonna go into it right now but this is what gets returned <clears throat> right um, there are a lot of things here but what interests us most is total profit loss this is what interest us, interests us the most and this is what we want to maximize so right here when it's going to uh, return this um, we're gonna the fitness function is going to return um, float of results of total profit loss so yes this is it uh, I hope this is starting to somewhat make sense. Now, let's uh, define our optimizer. Strategy optimizer. N. Fitness function is equal to fitness function that we just defined. Next, N generations. Uh, how many generations do we want to run this for? Well, um, Let's say um, let's start with something small. Let's start with twenty, just twenty generations. Because remember, uh, we have one thousand candles um, th that we're back testing up on for each individual in a population. So uh, that's a lot, considering that we're gonna have. So what comes after n generations comes. Uh, generation size 
generation size is the number of individuals per population. So if we have 50 individuals per population, that means we're going to run this backtesting function 50 times per generation, right? And then um, times 20, so we're going to run this about a thousand times. And trust me, this takes some time. It's not the most optimal um, um, use. It doesn't, it's not the most optimal use of time. Uh, doesn't have the most optimal use of time so it's going to take some time so these are decent numbers uh, next we have the number of genes which here we, we have five genes and next we have the gene ranges and gene ranges is going to contain so the first four genes as I said are the first one is RSI length <clears throat> so we want RSI length between 3 and uh, 50 uh, we want a Bollinger length, Bollinger bands length between, um, uh, let's say, 10 and uh, and 80, 20, 20 and 80, ah, 15, 15 and 80. So three, let's just say three and 40 here, 340, 15, 80. Then, um, then we're gonna have the. What do we have here? So we have overbought level. Overbought means it was bought too much, right? That means that the price is a bit too high. That means the RSA is a bit too high. Yeah, overbought level. We want it somewhere between um, 60 and 100. The, the, the normal one is 70. So let's just get six, between 60 and 100. And the oversold level, well, the normal one is 30. So we'll get between uh, 0 and 40. And the last one, the last gene, the take profit, is going to be between 1,004, let's say, because 0.4% I think means that we're barely making any profit because the fees are 0.1% per trade or 0.2%. So 0.2 and 0.2 is 0.4% around there. So that, that means that we're barely making any profit. And uh, 1,100, so that's 10% per trade. Actually, let's make it um, let's make it fifteen percent per trade. Okay. After gene ranges, mutation probability. How likely is one individual to be mutated? And I'm gonna put this at uh, thirty percent. And uh, and uh, the gene mutation probability is zero point five. Uh, I've played a little bit with these numbers. Um, I think these 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 uh, these numbers give. Um, decent results and uh, the very last one is n select best and select best how many out of um, those uh, out of those 50 individual solutions are we gonna uh, are we gonna select to go to the next uh, stage and I, I want to put here of uh, I want to put here 10 I'm gonna put the top now let's let's put the top 15 Top 15 uh, individuals out of 50, that's uh, like uh, almost almost 40%, 30, 30 to 40, that's a, a big, that's a big number. Let's just take 10 uh, and that's, uh, wait, 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 15, uh, did I say it's 40%? No, no, 30%, it's almost 30%. Yeah, let's just, yeah, 14, that feels like a good number. <clears throat> Okay, uh, okay, cool. So now the only thing we're left to do is to run optimizer dot run genetic algo. And uh, this is gonna return uh, the best children, and we're gonna print them. We're gonna print the best children. Okay, cool. Let's. Let's run it. Thank <laughs> you. 
So as you can see, the average is getting slightly better, you know, over time it's gotten uh, quite better and uh, now it's sort of stuck around the same value. Uh, so is the best, the best is stuck at 154 for some time and the worst is around 100. Oh, there you go, a bit better. And now the very last generation is going to be, drum roll, boom! 151 that's pretty good okay now you can see what happened so the top 10 they're actually the same um, small changes here 23 24 but mainly they're the same so um, there are definitely ways to optimize to to make this run better um, you could get rid of all the clones or you could keep clones only of the very best ones so that you ensure that their their genes carry forward but um you can also over you can also you know have too many of them so for example we could uh maybe we could play with the with the gene mutation probability with the mutation probability make it a bit higher Maybe the select best, we can make it a little bit lower, we can make it 5, 10, um, and, uh, and run it like that. But let's, uh, one last thing before I let you guys go, I want to try is, I'm going to, I want to run, uh, I want to backtest this strategy, first using the initial values that were here, and and this and then using this uh, return values just to see if if it improved at all. I actually don't know if this happened or not. So uh, what I'm gonna do? Is I'm gonna comment this out. And this one, so we got one, 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 oh, nine. So I imagine that's about 10%, point nine per trade. And uh, this will be 318, 69, and 23. And then we're going to run it again. Alright, let's try. Wow! So we obviously had pretty bad um, uh, initial um, parameters right here. Uh, but look, that's a huge, huge, huge increase. It proves that um, this strategy optimizer works. Um, well, it it doesn't prove that it works but it shows that it has potential because at the end of the day we're backtesting we're not running it live so we're only seeing past data so we're not entirely sure that um, what's gonna happen if you run it live but uh, it does you know make us think a little bit you know uh, could we use this live and uh, and if so how 